What's good, people? It's about that time to randomly relate reverse ranch, no hate. So I got another fire video for y'all, and you know what? It's not really a part two, but it is a follow-up part of it anyway. Before I get into that, to those details, let me just say, Chris Colbert fights tonight, okay, and he's fighting King Tuck tonight, who was a replacement for Gamboa. Now, the way I see that fight is this. Gamboa is a guy that a lot of people, they knock him, he's washed up, he's a journeyman, and pretty much, I feel like Chris Colbert fighting him, um, he should have, I feel like he would have won. It's a fight he should win. Um, Gamboa, of course, if you fight him, uh, your, con your name is coming up in the conversations with Devin Haney and Tank Davis, you know, as being like the last two guys that fought him and beat him and, and so that's how people kind of measure how good you may be or how you know because of, of, of things like that you guys fight the same person let's see how anybody did against him um Chris Colbert doesn't get credit he really doesn't he's a much better fighter than he gets credit for um now he does a lot of things for charities so he wears the hair color um as a represent, as a representation of a you know of, of that charity, so I think he said he's done it for like cancer, or like breast cancer, or uh, I think he, uh, he said uh, MS for multiple sclerosis and some other thing. You know, y'all check his video out. He got another you know thing uh, fight hype interview. He, he he's explaining these things to you. Um, one thing I can say about Chris is people can say what they want. He's confident in himself, but he's very humble. He does nothing but give, you know, uh, 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 props to other fighters. But he doesn't bite his tongue. He doesn't have a filter with trying to sugarcoat it, which I respect. Because what happens is the same people that you're trying to show respect to won't show you that same respect. Now, I'm going to give you an example of something, okay? Chris Colbert was asked to name his top five. Okay, he was being interviewed by Ellie Setback, right? Reporting. So, Chris thought he said that he was putting him in the top five. And Chris goes, no, 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 I'm not. I'm not in the top five. No, I'm not. I still got a lot of work to do. I got, you know, I'm not going to disrespect boxing like that. Now, check this out. He's not saying he's not skilled where people can want to put him in the top five. Because, obviously, he wants to fight top guys. Okay. What he's saying is, I can say I'm I'm top five, or I can say whatever, but I have to prove that. I'd rather prove it than tell you I'm this, I'm that, you know, and as far as him getting his credit, well, listen, this is a generation of people who nobody's good at nothing when they are, but when they suck, they're the best. Regardless, Chris... You know, people said, oh, I saw a video titled, oh, Chris Colbert, uh, 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 roast uh, Errol Spence. No, he didn't. And the thing is, not one video have I saw with Chris Colbert is he initiating comments about other fighters. Just, oh, let's talk about this guy, that guy. They asked him about Pacquiao versus Spence, who wins. He said he think they're both talented fighters, both of them. He said, but he think Pacquiao um, can win. Where did he roast Earl Spence? These are people trying to clickbait you to watch their video because you think you're getting ready to hear a guy go in on another guy, which wasn't even the case. Okay? They asked him, I saw a video, I saw titles where, oh, he dish, he 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 blazes uh uh um what's the little guy name, man? Um longest reigning champion in boxing, Gary Russell. He didn't disrespect Gary Russell. He said Gary Russell was a great, tremendous talent. He said, but he's he's a smaller guy. I mean, I'm not saying he can't give me some work if we fight, but I'm saying like I'd rather fight somebody like more my weight and if you, and or, or a little bigger. He said because I walk around like 150 something pounds, so I know fight night I'm gonna rehydrate back up to like 150. Gary Russell was naturally that weight, so I mean, you know, I'd rather fight somebody more my size. 
which is honorable because you got a lot of people who will just take advantage of the opportunity and say, man, oh, I fight that little motherfucker. Now, you can't fault them, but you can look at them sideways if they'll fight a much smaller guy. But then when they get in there with somebody who's equally as dangerous, but going to be more dangerous because they're, they're equals in weight and size and they back out, then it's like, well, why didn't you fight him? He's naturally your weight. That little guy had to move up. Right, and you rehydrated and was still 20 something pounds heavier than that guy, right? So I respect what he was saying. Not one time did I hear him like go out after these guys. Now, the vulgarity when he talks, I've heard people say, Oh, it's the way he talk. And what I'm referencing now, Mr. Sourpuss, Deontay Wilder, caused him to have his video taken down. You know, the video I played for you guys that you heard him speaking about what he thought when he was asked about Deontay Wilder. Listen, people. I've heard people say, oh, it's because he's saying nigga and stuff like that. No, that's bullshit. That's bullshit. You go through any, any fucking video, whether it's Terrence Crawford, whether it was Gary Russell, whether whoever it may be, they use the word nigga all the time and not one of those videos was pulled because they're using the word nigga okay you can watch music all day long nigga nigga motherfucker nigga 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 all day long nobody's flagging those videos those videos are not being taken down so because he used the word nigga no if that would be used as an excuse that's all that would be no that's bullshit Maybe because him saying things like he don't believe that glove gate shit. Wilder made nothing but excuses. Too many excuses, man. He's not going to get his belts back from Tyson Fury. Uh, may maybe those type of things. See, because let me explain something. This is not the first time that somebody's made a video and said something in Wilder's regard that wasn't in his favor and the video was taken down. This is not the first time. Okay, and I ask you guys, I challenge anybody, okay, anybody, to explain why you cannot find Deontay Wilder versus Harold Sconia anywhere. I challenge anybody, anybody, Deontay Wilder himself to say why you can't find that fight anywhere. Any fight with Deontay got dropped, got beat up, looked bad early in his career, any of that. You cannot find these fights. Not clips, not nothing. You cannot find these fights. Anything that exposes him, you can't find anymore. Why? Why do these videos of him disappear? Now, let me show you the hypocrisy, okay, and how you wage war amongst people in general okay with nonsense first off Deontay Wilder can say what he wants he can insult whoever but it's okay and his followers applaud that and they quit to talk about it and, 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 and want to clap and smile because he called did he call Dillian White gay said that the man has a husband he's obsessed with me he's gay well here's the funny thing right People are sensitive to how you reference gay people because any little thing is gay bashing. All you gotta say, look, I'm 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 straight. I, I'm not. I'm, that's not my lifestyle. Oh, but 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 people, I don't give a shit how you live. That's your life, not mine. But that's gay bashing simply because you don't partake in certain things. But this man referenced Dylan White as being gay to insult him. He's questioning his sexuality, questioning his manhood because he wants to fight him. That wasn't found offensive. Uh, they, 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 he, he, he calls AJ or Uncle Tom, says he's over there buck dancing. Okay, I've heard boxing ego say the same thing out of his mouth, not quoting Deontay, him saying himself that AJ's over there buck dancing for um, uh, 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 um, Eddie Hearn. Did they, did they ban Boxing Ego's video? So are they going to start banning Deontay Wilder videos? He said all gypsies are thieves, right? 
So, so it's okay for him to say things. Now, these are interviews that he chose to go and do so he could say what he wanted to say. But nothing he says is offensive. Okay. They said Chris Colbert is talking about things from the past, right? They need to be going forward, focusing on, focusing on, you know, what Tyson Fury and Wild is about to do next. Whoa, 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 motherfucking whoa. Haven't I been saying for the fucking longest, Wilder himself is still talking about fights one and two. He should be focusing on fight three. Why are we even having these conversations about what he think Fury did and what happened and this happened? And that? Why? So he's not even focused on going forward as far as his conversations are concerned. But yet Chris Colbert talks about something that he's asked about and oh, but he's focusing on the no, no, no. See, he's asked a question. And they're having a conversation because he was asked, what does he think? So it's okay for Wilder to bring that shit up. But Chris can't respond unless he's responding in, 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 in Tyson Fury's favor. Let me tell you something. He could have said nigga a thousand more times. You want to know what? If he was saying that nigga was cheated, that nigga fucked Fury to fuck up. Hell no, they cheated that nigga. That video wouldn't have been bad. No, it's because he was speaking his mind, okay? And then Deontay Wilder and his little minions, oh, I'm going to fall back, man. I'm not even going to fucking re or, 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 or watch Jamel Charlo fight no more. I'm not going to support Jamel Charlo. Mm. Remember I told you guys, if you don't want to support a fight because you think it's a junk fight, don't support it because you're spending your money. To go buy a ticket at the arena or to go order a pay-per-view. You're spending your money and you cannot blame them because they cannot control how you spend your money, right? Now check this out. Errol Spitz made a comment and said, as a response to, to, to Chris Colbert saying that he thinks Pacquiao can win the fight. Oh, he's hating on Errol Spitz. Oh, this and that. Oh, who the fuck is Chris Colbert? He ain't nobody. He ain't done nothing. He's a boring fighter. Yada, yada. So wait. So just because he thinks that Pacquiao can beat Errol Spence, you guys know Errol Spence, whoever he fights, I want to see Errol Spence win. Right? But why is Errol Spence responding that way? Just because Chris Colbert thinks that Pacquiao can win the fight. And I saw that interview and he did not insult Chris, um, Spence. He did say Spence is flat-footed. He is. He's not lying. I myself said I like what um, Errol Spence is a fighter. But Errol Spence sometimes it, it, you cringe watching him fight because he doesn't fight to his full potential. He's long, he's rangy, but he fights in the phone booth with guys that he should not be fighting this close with. Use your physical gifts. I've said that. So, so why is Chris wrong for saying the things that he said? He's just pointing out what advantages and disadvantages he thinks he would have either fighter would have it. He just said he thinks Pacquiao can win. And he's saying Spence is flat-footed and the angles and all that. I, and what, what did you hear me say? I said, I think Spence will beat Pacquiao. But still, Spence make fights harder than they need to be. Errol Spence himself, out of his own mouth, okay, have said the same thing we've heard Jamal Charlo say. I can box, use my jab, and you know, but that shit boring to me. They both said the same exact thing, which shows a lack of discipline. Because what you're saying is, I can win this fight. I know I got better skills than him, but nah. I would be stupid and fight in a dumb way. And no matter how exciting Errol Spence fights may be, people still don't give him full credit. So if you're fighting to try to ooh and ah these fans, nah, you're not, you're not going to get your point across that way. Here you are, unified champion. People still say Terrence Crawford will beat you. So... What did Chris What did Chris Colbert say that was so wrong? You understand what I'm saying? For him to even get an attitude to respond and say that Chris Colbert's a boring fighter, yada, yada, and all that. Listen. Again. Here you have this big confusion amongst black fighters. Because someone asks you a question, right? Suck your ass in that video, then go repeat to the next fighter what that fighter said about you, and... It just goes from one to the next to the next to the next. And now black fighters can't get along. Black fighters can't respect each other because somebody has an opinion. 
if somebody says, oh, I think such and such got a better boxing channel than you, Aries, good for you. What the fuck do I care? I don't, all, my focus is who supports my channel, who, who rides with me, who's a part of the family, who's going to be a part of the family, not those who, oh man, he, he, I don't like his channel. Well, you don't have to like the channel. Stop fucking watching. It's as simple as that. Right? Why am I going to get upset because you like another channel better? That's your business, who you like, what you like. I don't, listen, man. <laughs> I know who I am. I know what I am. This channel doesn't make me who I am. But I express part of who I am through this channel. Okay? People are always going to have a reason. Even if it's just an excuse to want to criticize. You speak logic, truth, and reason. People give you opinions and attitude. Okay? Anger, opinions, and attitude. They think that that's justifying what they're saying. Not to mention... It's all wrapped around lies. Now, check this out. If you listen to any of those videos with Chris Colbert, you will hear exactly what I'm saying. He's giving these fighters his, his credit, um, their credit. But when he talks, he just speaks the way he speaks. Now, I'm not a fan of all that nigga, nigga, nigga shit, and I've been saying this for the longest. We need to stop calling each other niggas, first of all. We are black men. Okay, you want to say African American, black, whatever, but we are not. First off, and we should just say African American, really, because black is a fucking color. Okay, and okay, this is black. I don't look nothing like that. We say they use their white people. I don't know anybody that fucking white. All right, so we just just say American or African American or whatever. How you want to say it? But at the end of the day. Don't don't give me that shit about because he's saying nigga. Because like I said, there's a million videos of people saying nigga. But check this out, right? Jamel Charlo, who said, you know, that look, the better man just won. Pretty much overall. The fact that he said, the fact that he said he ain't buying all them stories about no glove gate and all that, the better man just won. That's where Deontay Wilder's minions, his his supporters on his team and his followers on these YouTube channels and all this shit decide that they're not gonna support Jamel Charlo anymore because of his comments. Okay? With or without their support, Jamel Charlo will be just fine. Okay? Jamel Charlo's fans is his fans. If you're watching Jamel Charlo and because he believes Deontay Wilder lost and you decide to not support his career or whatever, then you never liked Jamel Charlo. It wasn't you, you didn't you was fake from day one. Okay, at the end of the day, though, do you understand? Look at the division between black people. Look at the division between black people and who carries it. Who carries it? Whoever you speak to that wants to go back and talk. Reporters do this shit. Like I said, they'll talk to you, they'll ask you questions, ask you questions, praise you, tell you how dope you are, you this, you that, and then go to the very next person and say, what you said about that person, and all this shit goes. So here goes Ellie's setback, right? Well, he's not white, but he's not black, right? We know he's Latino, but the point what I'm saying, look at what happens. Somebody, here's the problem, okay? Well, it's part of the problem, for one. It can be a white, a Jew, a Puerto Rican, an Indian, somebody from Jupiter, it doesn't fucking matter, can say anything to black people Okay, to a black person, and it will spread, and guess what? The hate is not towards the ones who started the shit, or who tried to create and make more out of a situation than what it was, but that's where the energy comes from that, and it's directed at other blacks. Then black people can say something. Not even being disrespectful, just say something to have a different opinion, and then there's beef amongst blacks. Then, all of a sudden, you pick and choose who's an honorable black so now, if we don't see it the same way, then we are all coons and we're all haters of that person, which y'all know I don't care about that nonsense. But understand something, okay? Understand something. That man, Deontay Wilder, has said a lot of shit about a lot of people. And I have yet to see or hear anything about someone taking down a Deontay Wilder video because he disrespected someone. Hold up. So you mean to tell me you mean to tell me, let me show you how fucked up this is. Chris Colbert spoke his mind. 
said what he felt, right? He's not buying Glove Gate. Malik Scott is not going to be able to teach him nothing to beat Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury is just a better fighter, point blank. He made too many excuses. Why he fired Mark Breland? But he always talking that racist shit. He's only he's only talking about what actually happens, right? All right? He he didn't say anything disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, he clowned him. We all clown him. He makes a clown of himself. But wait a minute. Jarrell Miller told the world he fucked your wife. That was my bitch before Deontay Wilder got with her. Maybe that's why that nigga don't like me. They didn't fucking blend. They didn't, they didn't take down Jarrell Miller's video. That motherfucking video still up. Know how I know? Because I searched it before I even did this video just to make sure that when I'm talking about it, right, I'm on point. And they didn't ban that shit. This man told the world he fucked your wife. And that was less offensive than a motherfucker sitting up on an interview answering questions and giving his opinion about what we all agree with anyway that got some sense. So now basically telling the truth gets you banned. But going along and kissing ass, then it's okay. No, like I said, he could have said nigga 20 more times, 20,000 more times. If he was saying Deontay Wilder won and was robbed in that fight, that video would still be up. We know that. Now understand this too. I've seen the video. I'm not even going to go into it. There's somebody clowning Deontay Wilder right now about the fact that he had the video taken down. And you know his minions will say, well, how you know Deontay has something to do with it? Well, who else? Who else? Who else? So so what? You're going, you're going to take Dylan White's video down of bench pressing 310 pounds? Making... Of, 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 of uh, I guess of him clowning Deontay Wilder for stressing and straining and his little chicken legs kicking up trying to press that 300 and all crooked just to get one rep in huh so I, I guess if I make a video and, and, and bench what I can bench I'd just be showing off wouldn't I cause that 310 would be moved with no problem easily rep that shit for sets high reps okay that's lightweight to me so I guess if I go and make a video, and, oh shit, Aries repping that shit. What the fuck? No, no, we gotta take that shit down. How much? Three hundred and ten? Okay, if it was three hundred nine, it'd be okay. But no, man, three ten? Oh shit, no, hell no, oh, no. If it was three eleven rather, because three hundred nine is less. If it was, was three eleven, no, it's three ten. Champ couldn't do it but one time. Aries doing that shit like, oh no, we gotta, no, no, you can't outdo Champ. That's the games you playing. That's how petty. You always hear somebody when Deontay Wilder make a comment, somebody will say, is he really that petty? Yeah, you see it. He's that petty. He's that childish. And let me say, I want to shout out and salute everybody. Okay? For responding. And those who actually made comments to me saying, I thank you for clearing this up about this whole, you know, the term of pro-black. Because let me explain. And that was the focus the racism was the focus of the video, okay? And I thank you guys for getting it. For those who don't get it, you know, well, you wouldn't get it, okay? But at the end of the day, this is what I say and what I mean. You have too many people trying to be the poster boy for what pro-black is, for what black people are in general. And then people, because they stereotype and they get used to seeing the same type of shit all the time, they think that's just how they are. And it's like, who are they? We're, we're human beings, okay? That will be, if I, like, where I live, there's certain towns out here that's racist as fuck, okay? I've driven through towns where they have little flea markets out here, and they're sitting up, and check this out, sitting up there with their shotguns. Who's bothering these people? Nobody. Got their Confederate flags hanging up. They want you to know, right? We love Trump. Trump ain't the president no more, but they're like, fuck Biden. Trump is still our president. All this shit all over their lawns. You drive through there, they're sitting there, they little rocking chairs and shit. And I remember a police officer asking somebody, "Why? What's with the gun for? Why? I got, we got the right to bear arms. Nobody can tell us shit. Oh, fuck yourself, cop." And I'm, I was there seeing this shit, like, wow. 
And what they were doing, they was physically standing in the road and was telling black people they couldn't go. They had a job fair and they knew it. And they was what they were doing was trying to prevent black people or anybody that was not a white American. Okay? From going in there. Somebody took a big piece of cardboard and wrote on the front, the Trump fence starts here. And put it across and was sitting there was only letting white people go through. I'm talking now in 2021. About a month and a half ago. So when people talk this racism shit, you motherfuckers don't, don't know the half of what's still going on. But because a man got his ass kicked in the ring and he starts bringing up racism and talking about racism and all that shit, then it, 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 it's racist. How? Well, I can't explain it, but it's racist because he said it, so it has to be true. Yeah, so standing here with guns, somebody said, officer, if you had 50 white um, black people standing there with guns, you motherfuckers would have had a National Guards out here. Why the fuck are y'all even allowing this shit? And you know what was so crazy? They had like about 10 police cars come out there and they were like pleading with them that like, you can't do that. Nobody got arrested. Nobody got pepper sprayed. Nobody got shot. And we've seen black people on their hand, on their knees, hands up in the air, still get the dog sicked on them and all that. And we've seen this shit, man. I'm making this point because you got these idiots that talk about racism and oh everything racist right because somebody want his fucking way. And so if I play the race card, that'll make them lighten up. That that'll stir up some shit. That that I'm gonna try to get as many people to rally behind me as I possibly can, but I'm gonna just use the race card only because I lost. Only because I lost. I'm willing to guarantee you if the circumstances was different like everything happened only while the knocked fury out i guarantee you if tyson fury was fighting jarrell miller or charles martin or michael hunter i guarantee you deontay wilder would not open his mouth to say yo look man fury fury's a dirty fighter he's a cheater we knew about him all along yo he's using his white privilege he no he'd just be better than them and that's why he said that he was the second best heavyweight next to himself. So basically, what we're dealing with right now and what we're seeing right now is just more of the same. But again, I'm opening these things up to you guys because I want you guys to understand the reality of what's happening. Okay. Do you guys see what happened with Nito Donaire? All right. Did you see him and Casimiro how the fight is off now? I'm not going to go into the details too much. I know what happened, okay? But do you guys understand? I just want to make this point as well. He want random drug testing. He don't want that. Oh, he was tested last month. He, no, I want him tested now. Because after he was tested, you don't know what he put in his system. So if something's in his system now, we will know about it. Casimiro's team was like, no, we're not doing that shit, right? And all this shit that went back and forth with his wife being the manager and all that and the disrespect that happened and all or whatever, right? I'm bringing that up to get into this. Now, I'm not saying there's nobody who's disappointed, not disappointed, because Donier called the fight off. And But remember when Floyd Mayweather wanted Pacquiao? And any other fighter for that matter, not just Pacquiao, any fighter, but to do random drug testing. The only thing was Pacquiao was the one, only one that gave resistance. Remember everybody was saying that Floyd, he was scared of Pacquiao, he was ducking Pacquiao, or he's just making an excuse to not fight Pacquiao. Floyd wanted everybody he fought to do it. And the thing was, he, we're both going to do it, not just you, both of us. Because they just want a fair shake. That's all Nito Donaire wants. But do you understand? It was everybody. And I can tell you more black people was, I can, so many black people was knocking Floyd, another black man, for wanting the fight to be fair. But I hear a lot of black people taking Nito Donaire's back saying, nah, man, he's the one to be fair. I don't hear them calling him a coward. Oh, he's just scared of Casemiro. And I'm not saying that there's nobody that thinks that or saying that, but I have yet to hear anybody say that shit. 
But when Floyd was asking for the same thing, he was scared. He's a bitch. He's a coward. And I'm like, look at all these black people knocking Floyd. Because why? So you guys who think like that and all this coon shit that y'all talk, y'all got to get y'all shit together before you can come talk about any other nationality of people hating on black people when black people themselves are sitting up here shitting all over each other. And I'm not talking about because a guy like Chris Colbert thinking Pacquiao can beat um, Spence. That's not what I'm saying. And he didn't, he's not, first off, he's not even talking about who he wants to win. He's saying who he, who, 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 who he think will win. Whether he likes Pacquiao better or want Pacquiao to win, that's not even the point. Okay, but, okay, is it any difference with little kids growing up, as, as, as kids growing up, everybody crazy about Bruce Lee? Was it any different that more black people will tell you they like Bruce Lee more than they like Jim Kelly? Is it any different? I didn't see anybody out there really imitating Jim Kelly like that. Huh? I didn't see anybody out there Im Im imitating uh, 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 um, any other black kung fu karate artist. I didn't see that. Everybody wanted to be Bruce Lee. Little black kids and all. I didn't grow up in China. So I can tell you what I seen with my own two eyes. And I know it was all black people. Puerto Rican. Why everybody was Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee. So is that any different? Did people, did black people take Jim, jump and say they think Jim Kelly's better or they like Jim Kelly better because he was black? No, they didn't do that. Everybody, so why wasn't that offensive? That you're picking a Chinaman over a black man. If, so if we want to play the race game, do you understand what I'm saying? Why is it any different? So, no. And I'm saying that because the same people who would say, oh man, Chris Colbert sitting up here talking about Pacquiao could beat uh, Earl Spence. Ask Errol Spence who do he like better, Jim Kelly or Bruce Lee? He'd probably say Bruce Lee. I don't know for sure who he but most people, that's, that's my point. They would say Bruce Lee over Jim Kelly. You understand what I'm saying? But, but, you know, black people who were sitting up here cheering for Conor McGregor to beat Floyd. So, this is my point. You pick and choose who you want to win. And it's okay for certain people. Here's a situation where these sensitive ass Deontay Wilder fans, y'all. One thing that I'm pretty sure everybody see, Deontay Wilder fanboys are just like him. They got that softness, that that sensitive. I can't say them. Remember, he said they hurt me so bad. He's playing with my emotions. Men don't even say shit like that. Like I said a long time ago, only time that shit was acceptable was when Big Worm said that shit to Smokey. Playing my money is like playing my emotions. You smoking my shit? Smoking your shit? Hell, worm. I will smoke my... I, what do you say? I steal from my mama. Before I steal from you, man. And you know this, man. That's the only time that shit was funny and acceptable. Don't no fucking man sit there. Why are you playing my emotions? I was so hurt. I was playing my emotions. That's female talk. That's feminine shit. Don't no man sit there and say shit like that. Don't no man sit there talking about you playing with my emotions. Not to mention... The guy, okay, who you directed that to is another guy. Eddie Hearn and Anthony Joshua, they play with my emotions. How the fuck does a man play with your emotions, man? That shit don't sound a little, a little twisty to you? Two men playing with your emotions? And you sat here and called Dillian White gay? Nobody found that offensive. Why are you calling this man gay? Oh. Are you gay bashing now? Or are, are you saying something against homosexual? No, but somebody else would get that shit flat. I mean, Eminem is a white guy. And Eminem apologized. I don't know if, if what, uh, understand. I don't remember if it was his record label or somebody told him he should. Or if he did it genuinely apologize to Elton John for making remarks about gay people. You know, and Elton, directing it at Elton John in general. Eminem is a white rapper that talks about chopping his baby's mother up and hiding her body in garbage disposal and all kinds of stupid shit like that. Is that any different from you talking about putting a bullet in somebody's head and still murder, right? Is it a classier way to murder somebody? So what I'm saying, that would just be like you saying, oh, listen to these rappers talking about killing each other. But then a white rapper saying the same shit, just he's not talking about guns. I'm a, Well, he said he's going to shoot her, your honor. I said I'm going to stab her. Well, you still talk about murder, right? So now when you sit and you just look at common sense and look at the simplicity of it all, 
what are you actually complaining about when you're saying this guy is not supporting black people? No, he's not supporting bullshit lies that just happen to be coming from a black man. That's what that is. It ain't got nothing to do with supporting black people. The other day when that situation happened, the other month, when those people were out there with the shotguns and had the Confederate flag. In fact, and then let me just tell you something. You didn't see that on not one news channel. Not one. You didn't see it in no paper. And I know because I live out here. And I know what I, I saw it. I was there. They were purposely doing that to prevent black people, anybody that was not a white American from going. They out here taking our fucking jobs. Yada, yada, you had this one white dude, one of them long ZZ Top type beards, and he was out there, what? Guns out. We got the right to bear arms. We're not breaking any law. All this shit. Who's bothering these people? Pure racist. Clearly racist. This is the first time you hear me mentioning this, and this was like about a month and a half ago, because like I said, it's a boxing channel. I'm just taking the time to explain this because I want people to understand, okay? And for, for people that's, that's, that, that have the idiot syndrome as well, stop narrowing black people down to one man. Because what you're doing is saying, we're not supporting black people. Just like, you remember how, how Malik Scott tried to tell right here, right here, you said his whole camp. When you say his whole camp, no, he had a person. Not with his camp, he had a, a problem with one person. So say one person, not his whole camp. But, uh, yeah, bullshit. He blamed everybody. But this is what you guys are doing. Because we don't believe his bullshit, we're not supporting black people. No, we're not supporting his fucking lies. Let me say this to make some sense to you fools too. I don't know this man personally. I don't personally care. Like, for example, when this video's done, I upload it, I go do my workout, I go. I'm not walking around here thinking about Deontay Wilder. I'm not walking around here thinking about Anthony Joshua. I'm not walking around here thinking about boxers and who's going to fight who. No. When we out chilling and relaxing and, and boxing comes up and we're talking about certain things, you know, um, I create content. So certain things we talk about is, okay, yeah, this, that, whatever. But I, I, there's a lot of stuff I don't talk about purposely. But understand, right? I don't walk around here mad. You hear a lot of a, a lot of guys with YouTube channels say, I'm pissed off because, or well, I'm, well, that's them. Why would I be pissed off? It's your legacy. That's your money. I don't give a fuck about that. That's, that's, that's your personal business. My job is to bring the content and express myself how I see fit. Not to sit up here and walk around mad at you, angry at you. No, this is the job at hand. And I expose, I bring the truth, and we talk boxing. But what I'm doing, by even bringing up what happened in this particular town the other month, is I want you guys to understand, that was some racist shit. And they're out there, guys, the main ringleader, fucking people coming over here, taking our fucking job, this goddamn foreigners climbing over the fucking wall, and these fucking Americans don't even give a fuck about what's going on, yada yada. Now let me say this, there was not one black person or somebody of a different nationality, of it. no people of color was in that mix. And it was at least 50, 60 people out there. Had them on one side, maybe just say 25 or something like that, 30 on one side, another 25 on the other side. They, 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 they did not want to let you pass because you had to get it at one way and then the streets that were the intersection to go it's like back a back road to get to a place and it's kind of like out in the woods so you, you know they had it covered where they was turning you back around so as you're driving up and you see these people with guns more than likely people are going to be like oh what the fuck is going on and go back the other way now if you're white and they can clearly see you were white they would, and yeah because they know people was going to this fair so what we're doing is we're not letting any foreigners or any niggas come up here because this is America and these people are taking our jobs this is what the motherfucker kept walking around saying holding different signs up talking had what you call the little megaphone thing that it where was the police you know what they refer to them as peaceful protesters huh oh they don't want any trouble they're just peaceful protesters yet we see black people marching Okay, for our freedom, for our justice and equality, with their hands up in the air, so all the cameras can see we're not armed. These motherfuckers out here with guns and they call them peaceful protesters. That's racist as fuck. 
Now, how the fuck do you, okay? And yes, that's white privilege. Because I, I know, I'll bet that on the life of my mama and my, my kids and everybody I love. May they so rest right now. If that would have been 50, 60 black people, that would have been one. But that, trust me, it would have been on. And that shit would have been all over the paper. Some people would have died that night. It would not have been, oh, they're just peaceful protesters. See, but you motherfuckers don't deal with that kind of shit. You haven't seen that kind of shit. You sitting back in your fucking living rooms talking about whatever you, you think, but based on a, a fucking news show that's telling you what's going on. For those who've been apart and seen shit like this, you know where I'm coming from. That's real. That's white privilege. That's white supremacy. Because the cops showed up just to make sure that, well, just in case something goes down, at least, we, you know, they didn't have their guns out. They didn't have any fucking dogs. They were just talking to these people. These motherfuckers did not budge. That's racism. Two people fight. One win, one lose. One starts screaming racism. And then all the minions start screaming racism. But they can't explain what what acts of racism was displayed. They can't. What about the floppy glove? Motherfucker, we talk about a floppy glove. That has nothing to do with racism. What the fuck is your point? For every fucking thing that these people say, they can't explain anything. They try to counter what you say with the question when they can't when they can't answer something. They try to counter it with the, you know what they try to answer your question with the question. And then on top of that, they still end up going back to the same thing and they just jump from one thing to the next to the next. Because nothing that they see is on their own initiative. They're just repeating what they hear. And a liar's job is to prevent you from knowing the truth. That's why they lie. Because they don't want you to know the truth. That's why Chris Colbert video was taken down. And for people, now listen to all the black people saying Chris Colbert's a bum. Who the fuck did he beat? He ain't proved nothing. He ain't, he ain't no fucking champion. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, wait. Remember I said, I want to see all these motherfuckers that was kissing his ass, that was talking about how nice he is with his hands, if they going to turn on him, right? And what happened? And I said that, like, yeah, I, I'm interested to see their reaction after they see this video. And... Pretty much, after I put the video up, everybody else started putting the video up. And you started to, the point is that topic became hot. Nah, we gotta, we gotta take that shit down. We might can't get everybody, but we gonna get Chris Colbert shit taken down. Fight Hype is a big ass channel, okay? Worry about these smaller channels. And maybe, regardless, and I'm gonna always say what I gotta say. So I don't care. You know, like I said, I do this. I don't, even have a pay, I don't even have a Patreon, bro. I do this as a hobby. I do this as a hobby. So you ain't taking no money out my pocket by flagging the video. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, when these people are sitting up here, make it a big deal because a guy says nigga, when that's all you hear is nigga. You know, let me give you guys something, okay? Dave Chappelle a couple of years ago did a stand-up comedy. And Dave Chappelle said he was called into the to the office by the the, the big boss, but like by the higher ups, put it like that. I don't even like the word boss. But what happened? He said that they, you know, really called him in his network executive or whatever the hell she was, and she's telling him he's doing a good job with the show, yada yada, this that, and so he's like, oh, I appreciate it. Then he said, well, what did you really call me in here for, right? Because she said she don't call you in there for something unless something's wrong. So he's wanted to know what was going on. So he said, he goes, she's like, well, oh, yeah, well, it's nothing big. Just, um, you know, you, you you can't say the word faggot. And he's like, what do you mean? Like, why not? I mean, it's just comedy. Well, you know, it's offensive to people. You know, um, it's, you know, he's like, well, hold up, though. How's it offensive? Well, because you're not gay. And he says... Okay, well, I'm also not a nigga either, but we use the word nigga. Nobody never told me I can't say nigga. Yeah, now what is her response to that? That goes to show you the mindset of certain people. They may not lash at you about things or show any animosity or something to you, 
but they have a mindset to not understand, identify racism. They don't have a mindset to identify when they're being insulting to you. So he can say nigga, because why? He's a nigga to her. Whether she thought about that or not, you said he can't say faggot because he's not gay. So if he was gay, he could say faggot all day long, right? But he can say nigga, why? Let's just say if everybody starts walking around here using racial slurs to identify each other. I think that would make people start to speak up who normally sit back and don't care. Like if everybody walked around and, 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 and all, you know, white people was, hey, what's up, cracker? Hey, what's up, redneck? Hey, honky? Latino? Hey, what's up, you spick? Hey, 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 you, right? Huh? You see Asian? Hey, what's up, you chink? I guess then it would be like, wait, this shit getting out of hand. Because this is the kind of shit I'm saying. Let's not make it seem like racism is okay. Because it's not. No form of it is okay. And I always say, don't let me hear you motherfuckers. Nobody say shit about, well, how come I can't say nigger? You guys say it all the time. If you feel that word is offensive and understand how that word is used, why the fuck would you want to say it? But I always tell black people, stop trying to take ownership of that word like it's a cool thing because you choose to say it. So, no, I don't like the fact of people using that word all the time. I, I know what it means. I know how, oh, but nah, see, we, we flipped it. Yeah, whatever. At the end of the day, the whole point of the mentality of people who accept that saying nigga is okay or the fact that people want to be able to say nigga. They say, but you guys say, for one, when you say you guys, you're showing a division, the separation between you and whoever that person is. We're not the same, even though, even like here in America. When I say, why the fuck do we celebrate black history? Shouldn't black history just be a part of American history? Why are we giving a month like, like, you know, that's what, you, that's usually what they do to people who are foreigners to a country. Huh? give you a month or a day to celebrate something to right we get i'm black every fucking day not for a month so when you say that and, and, and idiots don't understand where you're coming from but but jesse jackson fought hard to get that yeah i know that that was then but you look at it you think somebody would come along and say man listen we want black history in all school curriculums we don't want it to be separated as black this black that what no we're all american people let's this racism shit got to end because we, we got to stop the divisions and we got to stop the stereotyping. And through time, it's going to take a long time. It took too long for shit to be fucked up like it is. So for people that think racism is dead, no, it's not. But again, I give you people the boxing news. And why I'm just taking the time to explain this because I want you guys to understand there's a lot of shit that every see and deal with and stand up against that I don't choose to come on a boxing channel and talk about. And for the person... That guy, Malik Omar, who talked about, talk about the things that Walter do good for people. This is a boxing channel, right? So now, when I mention, part of me mentioning the things that Chris Colbert do is because for people that think the way he thinks, okay? For people that think like you and say that, well, they're talking shit and bashing Chris Colbert simply because he feels like Wilder is not just, he's just not a, as good a fighter as Fury. And he don't think he can beat Fury. I don't hear none of you guys talking about his contributions and things that he do for people. So again, when I said, you know, how, are you aware how many fighters do great things for people outside of boxing, within boxing, that none of you talk about? But for some reason, we're all supposed to worship and praise Wilder. Aries don't worship and praise nobody. Not nothing, not nobody. What Aries do is I bring you guys boxing news and I like to interact with intelligent people. So when I'm hearing all these ignorant comments from people, when I hear people say dumb shit out their mouth who don't know anything, and it's like for people who actually talk about Muhammad Ali was racist and Ali, no, Muhammad Ali was faced with racism and was dealing with racism, was being discriminated against and stood his fucking grounds. You are born and raised in a country and not even fully free in that country. And then they want you to go to war and kill some people who ain't never did a fucking thing to you. But the people in the country that you're raised and born in are calling you nigga, boy, coon, monkey. And they want you to go kill somebody. 
and Ali knew that they were using people like Joe Lewis to lure more black people in because, well, if he do it, yeah, more black people will think that it's okay. And they'll go and they'll do it. And he already knew that. So he's pointing out the fact of this is what they're trying to do. They're not going to use me like that. Muhammad Ali said, I would rather die. I would not go fight in the war. Even if it means me facing machine gun fire, I'm ready to die. Now that's gangster. That's fucking gangster. And for you idiots that don't understand what Ali stood for, you need to get a clue. The fact that you think you can even compare this situation, there is no situation. It's some shit Deontay Wilder created. That's the whole point that you guys are overlooking. So even when Muhammad Ali was fighting Ernie Terrell, do you remember what he said in that press conference? He's like, why won't you call me by my name? He was about you, my brother. You black man just like me. You won't even call me by my name. Well, what is your name? Muhammad Ali's government name was Cassius Clay. He changed his name to Muhammad Ali and Ernie Terrell, okay, would not call him by his name. White people, okay, that would not call him by his name that was racist towards him was like, fuck him, I'm not honoring that Muslim fucking name shit. His name is Cassius. And they continued to want to call him Cassius and he corrected all of them, white, black, whoever. He ain't nobody here. It's not like he said it to Ernie Terrell but let the white people say that shit to him, no. And he told people, he went public, my name is Muhammad Ali. He does not respond to Cassius Clay anymore. His own parents who named him called him Muhammad Ali. Nobody called him Cassius. So if you're calling him Cassius Clay, it was direct disrespect. Ali spoke and was going around the country talking about peace and unity. Now he, in his beliefs with, with about uh, uh, Islam, what fucking, who do you know? How can you look at Ali, call him racist, and knock his his religious beliefs? When you can read the Bible itself or read any any religion, it's a belief, it's a faith. It's no proof that what you believe in is real. It's a faith. You have faith, why? Faith is what? The absence of proof. You believe because there's no proof of. The Bible, the first, especially the, 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 um, the Old Testament, Everything is punishable by death. You got verses in the Bible talking about if anybody believes in any God other than, other than the only one God. If they believe in another God, even if they are family, you should kill them. Those words are in the fucking Bible. So when you call somebody religious, on uh, uh, um, racist based on their religious beliefs, this is what I'm saying. You got to understand you might pick and choose what pertains to you or what you think don't think pertain to you. If you do that, you're not even honoring or really living up to the expectations of your religious beliefs. And we all know if you try to do that shit nowadays that the Bible was talking about, you'd be in fucking prison. Okay? There's a verse in the Bible that says if your children, okay, are disrespectful even after being disciplined, that they should be buried up to their necks and stoned to death. By all the townspeople. This is to make an example so people know not to get out of line. Who in the fuck is going to bury their kids up to their neck and do that shit now? So over in those countries, if they're still doing that, you say, those people are evil. They're wicked. Look at where it's coming from. And you need to understand what Ali, Ali didn't ask to hurt nobody. Ali just refused to go. He didn't want to go fight in the war. And he was being called a nigger, a boy and all that shit. And his beliefs was, you can't mix you shouldn't have whites with blacks and blacks. No, blacks should stay with black, whites should stay with white. That's, ain't, ain't that what racist people was, was, was always saying? And Ali was saying, this is what the fuck is going on. They hate us. Look at what they doing to me. I'm not initiating racism. I'm not out here looking to hurt nobody because they white or whatever. No, they fucking with me. So he felt like that's just the way it's designed to be. And he felt safer. He felt like, hey, I can relate to people. You got to understand, it's the lifestyle that was being, you know, shit that was going on and was happening at the time. Look at what happened through time. And guess what? One of the people that was closest to Ali through everything actually cried when Ali retired was Howard Cosell. And they had a lot of respect for each other. And I believe they actually had a love for each other. Because now it took Ali to go through that for people to start to embrace him and realize like, damn, 
he's a victim of racism and he's retaliating in a way of he didn't go hurt nobody he just had a mindset that we shouldn't mix because it's not going to work it is not meant to look at what's going on that's when you are a victim of your environment just like if you grow up and everybody's shooting and killing and murdering each other you just get used to that why you think you got all these little black fools walking around here jumping on videos talking about killing other niggas we kill niggas out here. they ain't talking about killing white people they ain't talking about killing Puerto Ricans. They ain't talking about killing. No, they talking about killing other black people. Do you understand what I'm saying? Notice when Chris Colbert was referring to JDs, he said, no, he should fight that. Well, why he still got that white nigga around? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So he's not narrowing the word nigga to black people. It's just a term. I don't like it, but it's a term. See, this is what I'm saying. So that's an excuse about because he said nigga. But listen. Point what I'm saying, people. And before I say that, understand Ali was embraced. And Ali was showing like, damn, he started to see like, there are people that's different. Everybody's not the same. Sometimes you got to go through something to get to a point to have a better understanding. So don't ever compare no fucking Deontay Wilder to Muhammad Ali. Don't ever fucking, not, not what he does in the ring or out the ring. There's no fucking comparison. Okay, one thing I can say is Ali was a man's man. He was a stand-up guy. You ain't gonna catch Ali twerking his ass and gyrating, fucking making humping motions like he's fucking the air and doing stupid shit and talk about he wanna have a baby and no, no, no. Ali never made excuses when he lost a fight. He just gave credit to his opponent. It's gotta come back better. Never, never. And when Ali say he was a religious man, it was to get his mind right and he believed what he believed in his prayers. And you never heard Ali talk about he want to kill somebody in the ring. You never heard, uh, he might have insulted people and said shit to get in their head. Now, when he called, when he called Ernie Torello Uncle Tom, which what he should have been saying was a sambo, because that just shows Ali, you know, a lot, most people, they don't understand the story of Uncle Tom. What they really should be saying is Sambo, okay? Sambo was the house nigga, not Uncle Tom. But what he was basically telling them, it's like, look, white people won't say my name because they don't respect me because they, they racist towards me. They don't, they don't, they don't want to show me that respect. You supposed to be my brother. You black like me. You won't call me by my name. He kept calling them Cassius Clay, right? Okay, understand. These people trying to give you information don't even know what the fuck they're talking about. They're just talking. So when you sit here and try to compare a man making up in his mind something was racist just to give another excuse as to why he lost. What does white privilege have to do with you getting beat the fuck up? What the fuck does that got to do anything? Because you got your ass kicked, white privilege. No, you just got beat the fuck up. That's why you got beat up because of white privilege? No, it had nothing to do with his skills. How he prepared for the fight? No, it, it, he said what he was going to do and then did the shit. Is what made it so funny. But... What's white privilege about that? Every fucking thing. You know, what's so funny about this shit, man, is, is, is he's talking all this black, 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 black. And like I said, when you look at his team and look who's around him, there's nobody black calling shots. If I say him getting his ass, him kicking Malik Scott's ass and they're going to get him to come in there, Malik Scott shit didn't even work, his shit didn't even work against you. How the fuck you gonna trust him to do some shit that didn't work? And he said, "Was was was Emmanuel? Uh, what's his name? Um, Emmanuel Stewart's uh, nephew. Was he a great fighter? No, but he but but he's a tra yeah. And like Tyson Fury said, no, he wasn't a great fighter. But guess what? Right? You tweak certain things, certain shit you can add. But we already knew Tyson Fury could fight. That was the whole thing. Wilder lacked skill." So it's a lot of shit that he had to, you know, come up with in his arsenal. Notice we never seen any sparring footage, though. What do people say about sparring? Yeah, but sparring, you can't really go by sparring. Well, how in the fuck, if you can't go by sparring, which you're actually punching someone and they're punching you back, how can you go by hitting mitts and jumping, skipping rope, sloppily skipping rope, hitting mitts, still got flat, heavy-ass lead in his feet, Right? Still, y'all impressed by that because it's some amateur shit that you get to finally see. Like, everything I see, and this is not the knock him, this is just being real. Everything I see him doing looks like some beginner shit. Nothing he does 
look as impressive to where I'm feeling like, yo, he, no. I told you guys the same shit when Mike Tyson was hitting them mitts and y'all losing y'all shit. Uh, how he's going to kill Roy Jones. And I told you guys, nah, man, it's an exhibition. It's not going to be what you think. But at the same time, guess what? Him watching those, hitting those mitts was more was, was more entertaining than watching him and Roy fight, wasn't it? So you can't learn, you can't you can't determine anything by sparring, but you can determine it by him hitting some fucking mitt that don't hit back. And all Chris Colbert was doing was speaking the truth and speaking reality. Listen, he got the video taken down, it doesn't matter. Chris Colbert, I wish him nothing but the best. And you know what? It just goes to show you that it's hard for people to kick old habits. Like I said before, and I'm going to say it again, Wilder, I don't know him. I don't owe him jack shit. He don't owe me nothing. But I'm going to always speak the truth regardless to who it's about. But for him to, to, to feel some kind of way and want that video taken down, it just goes to show you what type of clown he is. And y'all can support him all y'all want. Y'all can feel what y'all want about him. But I just, I don't see Wilder. I just don't see him as being the type of person that people try to make you think he is. And anytime somebody's talking about they want a body on their record and all this shit, I want to, and this is stuff that he said out of his mouth. I want to stare a little kid, like I want to stare a little kid in the face while his father body on the ground twitching and all this shit. And this is like I always say, the same man who was sitting there getting emotional when he was scared, not knowing how he was going to take care of his daughter. So it's so it's as long as your kid live, it's okay for you. You the fact that you and then you are a man of God, but yet you, out of your own mouth, said you want to stare a little child in his face while his father's body is twitching on the ground while he's dying. And that's when I really was like, this motherfucker's a clown, man. I had to fuck with this dude. That comment was the ice on the cake for me. That comment. Because regardless to how you feel about the fighter, the fact that you, I want to stare a little child in the face while his, that's some punk ass coward shit to me. And it's an ignorant, stupid ass comment. And I stand by that shit and I always will. Never fall in love with lies. Remember the truth brings hate out of people and I will catch y'all on the next video.